Hello and welcome back to Wasteland 3. So, what are we doing? Well, we just killed a bunch of clones and now we have to kind of explore the place where we've uh, left off here. Now, there appears to be some loot, so let's go grab it. What have we got? We have a scientist outfit. Okay, equally useful in laboratories and laboratory based pornography. And a pulse gun. Ah, so that's what they were shooting us with. You found some clothing to try out, visit your barracks and Ranger HQ to customize your appearance. Oh, so we can wear the clothing and we could... Okay, I understand how we get that to work. So give me a second. So we got a lot more of that. We got the hydraulics and we got the LED matrix. Okay. So what we would do is we'd do something like that, toggle our chest armor off, and then we'd be able to see the outfit if we had it on. Okay, so that's kind of neat. What else have we got out here? We got the container, which we've already opened. And now it's just exploring the room. We also got a level up on Omen. So let's level up Omen here. So attributes are first. First attribute that we're going for. Oh, it was also pointed out to me. I should mention that here we are getting zero con per level here. So we, we never actually gain more health per level. Now this is this does apply retroactively to your previous level up. So if we were to put another point, if we were to put one point in strength, we would get the... Uh, three points per level our level would be six say next level so we'd get an extra 18 points of health immediately which is quite a lot when you look at our current con value so it might be worth just taking one point in there for sparhawk and is it heat no heat has it banshee actually already has it as well yeah so so for sparhawk and lucia it might be worth taking a single point in strength just to get your con up slightly but anyway we're talking about omen Omen can take the final point here, which goes up to 15 con per level, plus an extra 30 con for going here, which is a huge increase. So we're going to take that. So she now has 200 con overall, which is obviously insanely good. Right, skills. We go Animal Whisperer and keep pushing in there, which we don't necessarily need to do. Uh, survival is one that might be interesting. We haven't re yet reached the world map. Armor modding and weapon modding are also intriguing to me, as are explosives. Uh, and melee combat. I think I might go explosives here. And the reason I'm going to go explode, I might go explosives armor modding. The reason I'm going to go for explosives is um, we need to be able to disarm traps. So that seems like a very early thing to get. And then perks. We have no perk points. Cool. So that's her all set up. Great. Let's have a look around. Oh, are you also needing a level up? Uh, I think she does. Oh, cool. Attributes. So here, we have max charisma. We could start leveling intelligence in order to get extra skill points per level, which seems pretty good. We could also try something else, like speed or strength or awareness. I just got to figure out what exactly fits us here. Action point seems quite useful if we're going to get her to run around combat and heal us and do things like that. Uh, so I might take that, yeah. We might start giving her more abilities, like she has the rally ability to give us extra AP. We might give her more supportive abilities like that. Yeah. What other stuff can we get? We go leadership and get an extra bonus on that, which costs us two. Uh, the other one is we can go kiss ass or hard ass. We already got kiss ass from Marshall Quan, didn't we? Yeah, so kiss ass, we have level three of Marshall Quan. So we might want to start working on hard ass and start pushing that as our main thing. Maybe. Maybe. We could also go first aid. We could also go leadership. Leadership's quite useful because it increases your hit chance. What else does it do? I'd love to be able to see this in a better way. Is there a way to just, like, not take it? But then have a look. Undo changes. Right. So if I go in here. So that's showing us level 10. I want to see level 5. Hmm. See, it's got too much of a hit on it. So do you have to go real low? Yeah, if I go real low, keep the mouse as steady as I can along the edge, then you can see it. Okay, that's not too useful, but we get demoralized. Okay, even the toughest guys can be sensitive about their appearance. So what does that actually do? Leadership. Insult your uh, enemies, distracting them and reducing their hit chance by 20% and critical chance by 25%. That's intriguing. It's 2 AP. It kind of fits what I want. The other stuff we got are first aid. Using heal healing items boosts the target's max con. Uh, when an ally is down in battle, gain combat speed for two rounds. That could be useful, given how often we are getting downed. Uh, increases con as well and evasion. 
Okay, I might take an extra point in leadership right now. I don't know if we need Kiss Ass to be higher than that. Yep, confirm. And then I am actually going to take uh, this one, so demoralize. So now we can apply debuffs. And that also is the last perk in leadership, so there's no other leadership perks. So you just get the pure bonus of leadership now. Cool. His leadership in of itself is pretty good, so I guess that's why it has no perks. Right. Let's head up this way, start uh, looting. Because we got a whole room to loot. Uh, so we got the Clown's Guide to Paint, Makeup, and Acid. It's lore book. Oh, okay. Let's read the lore book then. Uh, is it there? It'd be in there. Cool. Oh, per sorry. That's permanently increased brawling. This one. Yeah, read. Chapter 5. Making Clown Paints. So, kids, you have your clown outfit, your clown horn, and clown nose all ready. Great. Now it's time to make your very own clown makeup. Wow. That's right. You're making your paints yourself, and the next chapter will discuss how you can use them to paint your face. Note, do not attempt without supervision of your parent or legal guardian. Clowns Incorporated cannot be held responsible for any paint-related accidents. There are four basic colors that we'll be want to make. A brilliant light blue, a beautiful indigo, a beautiful crimson allura, red, and a subtle light green to finish things off. Please refer to the mixes below. And is that it? Yeah. Okay, did that actually unlock something? It kind of implied that we could unlock clown outfits with that, but I think we already had those. <laughs> because we could choose them at the start of the game. Uh, junk. Turn your Jan into a Marcia. A, a self-help book for the trials and tribulations of being in a large family. That's a reference, but do I know what it's for? No. Ooh, also I'm noticing something. Look when I press shift here. The game isn't lagging. I think it might have updated. Ooh, that's very nice, isn't it? I like that. Like that a lot. Okay, can't get through that lockpick because it requires level six. Well, we might as well disable it. There's no purpose, but we'll disable it anyway to get the XP. Hopefully we can find the alarm. There's a clone machine. We'll ignore that for just now. Nitrogen tank might be what you wanted to hit at the start of combat to make it easier. Okay. This is also a thing to look at. Ammo box. Cool. So can I see when this beeping's connected to, or is it just not connected to anything? There we go. Omen is now uh, with us again. So this connects into there. Okay. So I'm going to get Lucia and just move her over here. And then I'm going to grab Marshall Quan and move him over there. I didn't want to select everybody. Okay. One time I didn't want to select everybody. Lucia, there. Select everybody who isn't Marshall, Quan, or Lucia. And then click on this. Yeah. On the desk, you find a chaotic mess of ancient dot matrix printouts, scientific journals, and dog-eared books. Notes are scrawled on upon them in a wild, childish hand. A computer awaits a button press. Begin the experiment. The computer analyzes both sensors as large volumes of data fill the screen. A thermal, a small thermal printer begins to spew out realms of information laden paper, or reams of information laden paper. Um, the text is thick with mind-numbing scientific jargon, charts, graphs, cryptic electrical and anatomical diagrams, and some printout reference books and notes on the table. The titles of the textbook stand out. Cloning in our time, real dream or reality, robotics, cybernetics, and cloning, the future is now. Cloning theory and practice, life everlasting TM, business prospectus, a new you. The list continues, but one component remains the same, the name on every title page. Professor Erwin John Finster, PhD. Every ranger knows the name of Erwin John Finster. Oh yes, because he was the one who had the uh, in Darwin's Village stuff going on. The director of the infamous Project Darwin and an old enemy of the Desert Rangers. Rose's tenant Irv had, has some explaining to do. Okay, so now we recognize that. What happened to Marshall Qu uh, Quan here? The stink. Hmm. Okay. Now I guess we'll try out the cloning machine. The readouts and graphics have flatlined, now the clones are dead. Given specialized knowledge and the right resources, it might be possible to make more. 
Okay, but we don't necessarily even know if we want to make more, right? Oh, but there's nothing else to do here. So what's our next objective here? Uh, don't you be my neighbor. Find and confront Irv with what you've discovered in his par apartment. We don't know where he is. So Irv is out currently. Well, I guess we'll leave here just for the second. Oh, guess that door doesn't really exist. That's okay. Yep. So we're going to go speak to uh, Rosie Wong here and see whether she can give us a clue. So, what'd you find in apartment three? Was he making bombs like I said? Um, he wasn't there, and it's weirder than that. Weirder how? Um, trust us. Don't ask. Okay, okay. Can I at least go in and clean up? Um, it's not safe in there. Please stay out until we find him. Oh, his security deposit's not gonna cover the repairs, is it? If he wasn't in his apartment, then he's probably at the bookshop in Market Square. Look for a skinny guy. Always wearing a lab coat. Let me know what happens. Okay, sure. So we'll head out. We did lose our cat, but there is somewhere else I need to go, actually, to test something out. Because I was told there was something we could do. We can collect the cyborg chickens that we found. Because there was one cyborg chicken in the cyborg chicken farm back at the Ranger HQ. Apparently the other one we found in the Garden of the Gods. If we use our charm animal, we'll then transport it to the cyborg chicken plant. Which sounds intriguing. And we don't currently have an animal companion, so that seems intriguing to go and have a look. Anyway, Colorado Springs is experiencing an increasing problem with refugees fleeing the vicious warlords who dominate the eastern plains. Okay, so I imagine that's going to become important soon, because they keep mentioning it. Like, it's in, it's in the loading screen tip, and we've heard a few different characters bring it up independently. So it seems like it's one of those things that they're keeping in the background for now, but it's going to kind of come to the forefront as the game continues. Right. Let's head this way. Uh, I actually want to head out to the Garden of the Gods first. I know that we could head in here for another quest, but we're going to head to the Garden of the Gods because I've got a reason to go there. Yep. They seem to be letting us in, which is good. Right. Off we go again. Uh, I wonder if there's any point in coming back here other, apart from to get this chicken. Like, I wonder whether if we speak to uh, the guy, last, what's his name? Barry Ward or something like that? I wonder if we speak to him, whether he's going to have anything new to say to us. Whether it's going to be the exact same stuff. It might be the exact same stuff, but you never know. Oh, it tells you what a waste wolf is on this loading screen tip. So the loading screen tips might give us minor spoilers about what comes next. Well, when I say spoilers, I mean like... Thing, it give, might be worth keeping an eye on them to be like, hey, maybe this thing is going to become important soon. Because we definitely found a, our first waste wolf in this area. Now, I vaguely remember where the chicken is. Does it show on our map? Not at all. Oh, I hear it. I hear it. No, that's normal chicken. That chicken is not a cyborg. I think it was along here. Wait, no, it was further. Wait, no, it was here, yeah? Now, this is where we found the cat. Uh, there's where we found a fox. We might come back for the fox if we don't get the chicken. There's the dead bodies of her family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's the cyborg chicken. Right. Oh, yes, and we needed to do a talk with it, right? Oh, we still need Animal Whisperer level 4. I should have leveled that up. I thought we only needed, like, level 3. Okay. Hey, go get the fox anyway. It's, some it's something to grab. Because we don't currently have the cat with us. Foxy Moxie. What's that do? Leadership range increases. Ah! So what you're saying is completely and utterly useless on the character who doesn't have leadership. Alright, well, you know. Good to know. Good to know. So the crit one was probably better for her. We also definitely need to find a doctor because we are a little bit, uh... Yeah, a little bit destroyed here. But that's okay. Right. <sighs> Did somebody fail to make it over here? Why is Omen stuck? Okay, she was just stuck for some reason. I guess she didn't come with us the first time. I'll need to pay attention to that. She'll get here soon. There we go. She's within range. Let's go. 
You must gather your party before set, uh, venturing forth. Yes. Right, so now we're going back to Colorado Springs, where it's again telling us about the refugees. So that this message was definitely different at one point for Colorado Springs, and it appears to have stayed the same, I assume, for the current chapter that we're on, or like the f current point in the game. So that tells me that this might be like a major thing soon. There's also refugees who are, like, or there's people living in a camp nearby, so they could be the refugees. And she did say, come back when you have something to talk to us about. So that might be coming up soon. That's my theory anyway. Right. Head round here. And we're looking for Irvin at the bookshop. Uh, ask your wife about uh, you. uh, Hi. About Do you have any books on cloning? I don't want to talk about it. Wait, I heard come somebody on, talk man. about books on cloning? You can't leave me wondering. It was... Uh, where, where's the person asking about books on cloning? The timing belt broke, so it, uh... Uh, let me open the map. I can't tell which one of these, which one of these is a bookstore. So this is Market Square. I definitely heard somebody ask about books on clone. Oh, there we go. It's Irv. There we go. You're a bookseller? Wait, ignore you. Oh, we can't buy books. Okay, that's fine. Hey, Irv. Uh, how would you feel if you had, um, if you had Omen here with the giant's, uh, sharp sign on her back? Just say... Hi, can I have a quick word with you? A tall, lanky man is looking over the books on a merchant stand, muttering nervously to himself. Hi, mind if we ask you some questions? Um, I guess. Wh who are you? Um, we're the ones asking the questions. You're Irv, right? We're not going to tell him we're desert rangers, so that's going to immediately just tri like trip something in the back of his mind. You're Irv, right? Um, uh, yes. What, what do you want? Are you going to arrest me? I really want... Do we have a reason to arrest you? Um... Ooh. We found some papers in your apartment written by Irwin John Finster. Is that your real name? I... Uh... He looks around nervously. Please don't tell the marshals. But I'm one of his clones. Unfortunately, I'm fourth generation, at least. So, I'm not as smart as the original. Smart enough to, to use Dr. Finster's notes to get the cloning machine working again, but... But not smart enough to make good quality clones. I can't even make one as good as myself. And I'm not that good. Bits of me don't work very well at all. Hmm. We were attacked in your apartment by a few, a few guys who looked just like you. Any explanation for that? Oh no! Did you kill them? Yes. Um, I'm afraid we had to. Sorry. Oh, poor clones. They... They never really acted right. I, I, I screwed up the formula somehow. What do you know about Dr. Finster? Oh, Dr. Finster was a genius. He's the only person in the world to have mastered the cloning of humans. He... He may have become a little paranoid at the end, but that doesn't lessen any of the good he gave to the world. Until he decided all humans had to die. He was a real humanitarian. Is Finster still alive? The original? No, n not anymore, but I guess in a way, as long as I'm alive, he is too, because I'm him, aren't I? He pales suddenly and swallows. Er, uh, I mean... I'm him, but not the part of him that wanted to wipe out the entire human race, right? Yeah? I, I wasn't... I wasn't suggesting... no. You know the whole nature versus nurture debate? How some things are genetic and some things you learn? Well, that killing everybody part of him, that was nurture. He, he wasn't born that way, and, 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 uh, and neither am I. I swear. You believe me, don't you? Hmm... Um, tell us more about these clones. Well, well, I, I guess I'm kind of afraid to make friends the normal way, so I made them an abnormal way. Only, I didn't do it very well. The, when they came out of the chamber, there was something wrong with them. They were really, really stupid and, and really, really crazy. And they, they just got crazier day by day. If... 
And if I hadn't run out of the apartment today, they would have killed me. I'm a bad father. I'm a bad, bad father. Hmm. We you believe you're not smart enough to threaten the human race? It's true. I'm not. I'm totally not. So, you're not going to arrest me? Uh, we're not. If we, if you bring your clone machine, you're welcome at Ranger headquarters. We could use a scientist. If you let you go back, will you promise to keep the noise down? Or you're too dangerous to be walking around free? I don't want him using the cloning machine. If I'm honest, that sounds horrible. I mean, we could recruit him though. But like, it seems like this is a great recruit, but I don't know. Hmm. I, I, I don't know here. I don't really know if we want him to be cloning anyone. That sounds bad. Like, that sounds really bad. I guess I'm gonna arrest him? Because I really don't want him cloning anybody? This is this is a, a hard choice, because like, I would cho naturally choose this one, because it's like, oh, it's another person in our headquarters. That sounds good. But I really don't like the idea of him having the cloning machine. Just as a very basic level, I think that's not gonna work. Hmm. You could say you're under arrest, but it feels a bit mean, because he hasn't really done an awful lot except try to clone someone. And he's definitely, we're not letting him go back to the San Lux apartments to clone people, because that's terrifying. So it's really one or three. It's like we go all in on cloning, or we arrest, I feel so bad about arresting him. I guess, come to the ranger headquarters, at least we can keep an eye on you. You're gonna let me be a real scientist? This is the best, I... I'm so grateful. I'll do good work for you. I promise. I don't believe you. Thank you so much. I, I can't help but feel we've made a horrible mistake. But I feel like either I option would be a horrible job. mistake. We've almost made a horrible mistake just Maybe by I'll starting the quest. Like uh, we need to go and speak to Rosie again. But I'm actually going to go and head all the way out oh. here. Rangers so did that end my quest? No. Okay, cool. Um, but uh, we need to go and find a doctor, so I'm going to do that first. Well, then we'll speak to Rosie, and then we'll head back and speak to. Uh, yes, th then we'll go to the club basically after that one. Okay, so Marcelo Gonzalez is a former marshal and radio communications expert that serves as Ranger HQ's radio officer. So this one's not too important, but I assume that's based again upon where we are in the storyline. And uh, in the storyline, we have recruited the this guy, so that's why we're getting that tip. Okay, cool. I need to remember to do that Animal Whisper one again. Yeah, I was just thinking there, because that's to the right of where we come in here. I need to remember to do it so that we actually do it and then remember to go back for the chicken. If I forget, like at some point I level it and then I haven't gone back for that chicken, please remind me. I will definitely go back if you remind me. Right. I don't know what the purpose of these chickens are, but there must be a purpose. Or maybe it's just XP, but you know. There must be something. Anyway. Heading in here. We got those two. Rangers. Hello, everybody. Uh. You're still down for the count? Okay. Up to the hospital. We can heal. Hello. Oh, Herb's in the hospital as well. Can you give these refugees some breathing room? Too many people in too little space is a health risk. What do you need, Rangers? Uh, can you patch us up? That's what you pay me for. Have a seat. Good. Hey, we're all healed, and all of our injuries are gone. I don't mind not having to clean and suture a festering wound. Uh, okay, it looks like sh actually there's a bug there. What do you need, Rangers? Hmm. I think because we had an injury that lowered our con, what it did is it took away our. It healed us to full, and then, yeah, it healed us to full, then took away our injuries, that which then increased our con. Which is a little unfortunate. Cut, now they're fixed. It. Cool. Hey, Irv. Hi, Rangers. Thanks again for letting me work for you. This is so exciting. Um, glad to have you. Are you enjoying the work? I, I am so happy. I'm learning so much. All my life, I wanted to be a scientist, but all I could do was read the books and dream. Now I can actually do things. It's incredible! What do you think of Dr. Parker? 
He's wonderful. He's almost as smart as Dr. Finster, but without all the, um, you know, evil. What are you working on? Waffle phones for if you get hungry during a call. What? Can you clone one of us? Uh, yes, theoretically. I can have the machine take your genetic material and run the process, uh, but um, no guarantee what comes out the other end. I did make a few tweaks to the process though, so whatever it is, it probably won't be so angry. Probably. Never mind. That's probably a good idea. Thank you, Rangers. You saved my life. I just life. want to check Hi, something. Rangers. It's good to see you again. Uh, what can I do? Thanks, right. Rangers. I'm going to quick save. Hello. Hi, Rangers. It's good Keith to see you. one of us. Uh, I can have... I did we want make to try a few anyway. tweets to the... Okay, well, how exciting. Uh, but before we start, one tiny caveat. The process requires special genetic material, and I've only got enough for one clone, so... If anything happens to our new friend, try to recover its remains so we can reuse them. Now, put your palm on the machine right here. Placing your palm on the pad of Irv's machine, you feel a small pinprick. Irv shows you a pink, pulsating, pineapple-sized glob of goo and tosses it in a hatch on the side of the machine. The machine whirs and rattles for a few minutes before a sound makes its way out, similar to air gurgling out of a pudding-filled balloon. The chamber shudders and the room rings with a wet slapping noise. With an ear ring squelch, a highly pressurized jet of goo fires out of a crack in the chassis. The chamber shudders and the room rings with a wet slapping noise. With an ear ring squelch, a highly pressurized jet of goo fires out of a crack in the chassis. Oh, it even clones the clothes. Finally, the doors slide open and a gush of foul-smelling purple liquid pours out, followed by a grey-skinned, hairless, and mucus-covered clone. Wub, wub, wub. Hey, this one can talk. Hello. Be afraid. Be very afraid. <laughs> Hi, Rangers. It's good to see you again. Uh, uh, what can I do for you? All right. Thanks, Rangers. So is it just a, uh, yeah, he'll just follow us around now. Okay, well, we got a new follower. Web, 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 web. Okay, I'm not sure what to do about our follower here. I guess accept his serve. existence. That's good, Austin, glad that you're here to serve. Um, well, this is definitely gonna make our conversation with Rosie interesting. Yeah, we'll travel to downtown Colorado Springs. Yeah. Hey Rosie, um, just want to tell you that we've got, um, we got a clone now. Pretty sweet. Do you have a clone? Okay, so this message has changed, so I guess it's not set. Colorado Springs is a rare, fully functioning society in post-apocalyptic America, but many harsh sa uh, sacrifices had to be made in order to maintain it. So yeah, maybe, that, maybe I'm wrong about the loading screen tips. Maybe they're actually just, like, random and they change after a set time in game. By, by that, I mean, like, you know, if you go in and out of an area, you're gonna keep the same tip, but they might be like running on a, a background timer, like it'll show for this amount of time. And then next time you go into a loading screen, it'll change. The last issue of the Who knows? Anyway, heading through here, Would you to death? all the way around. Not very, uh, you know, tactful to say that right next to the Wesson uh, air, but you know, it's fine. Right. All the way up and into the San Lux Apartments. Yes. I've got to say, the loading screens are interesting in this game and the fact that there are quite a lot of them. I mean, I'm trying to remember, are they better or worse than two? I think they're slightly about the same as two in terms of loading screen length, but it's just kind of odd quite how many there are. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, at least this one doesn't take very long because it's a small area. Maybe it's, maybe we won't notice it as much as we keep playing because some of the areas are either going to be so large that it's like one loading screen or they're going to be so small that it doesn't really matter. And it only really matters when going into Colorado Springs because it's kind of medium-sized. Any word on the loony and number three yet, Rangers? We found Irv and he won't be coming back. You can clear out his room now. About time. Gonna take me a week to clean up that mess. What was his deal anyway? 
Um, you don't need to know. It's all been taken care of. Ah, serves me right for asking, I guess. Well, thanks anyway. Here's a little something for getting him out. We're not, oh, my sciatica. We're not letting you, anyone Rosie? else. Yeah, we're not letting anyone else know about this cloning. We did get a couple of level ups. I'm just going to do that outside, though. Yeah, we'll travel to downtown Colorado Springs. Now it's time to go to the club. Yeah. I'm, I'm all about that club and life. Raven. Yeah. Woo. Anyway. Uh, what we need to do in the club is we need to find out what exactly is going on with the gang who helps the Dorseys get in here. Or maybe even organized it or acted as a liaison. Basically, we need to find out what's going on with Farron Brago. Which is interesting, because I'm sure we heard Farron Brago's name in a book about LA from uh, 2, and I think the book was talking about the first game. Anyway, uh... Let's level up Sparhawk. Now, I was talking about attributes, and we need to give one point in strength. So if I do that, his con should just jump up 18 points. Right? That jumped up 23 points. That's a little bit more. Oh, oh yes, that's right, because we also got the plus 5 from con there. Interestingly, our con had gone up 15 already, so you must get 15 con per level as a base. But this just happened to give us more con. That gave us an extra 3 con per level. Okay. Plus the 5 con base on it. So that's quite a lot of extra health, really. So I'll take it. Yeah. Seems good. Skills-wise, uh, we need 6 lock picking for that safe. Oh, no. Oh. Let me, let me try this out. Yeah, I'm not going to do perks. But uh, let me head back in there. Is that safe still there? If it's not, then I want to load an earlier save so we can get that safe. We'll see, though. We should have an auto save that would work. Or a quick save, because I haven't hit quick save yet. But yeah, um, may I hope we didn't have to do that before the quest ended. But yeah, there is a safe in here that needed six lockpick, and we have exactly six lockpicks. So it seems like the perfect time to have a look, and I bet that safe has the best loot in it. As in the best loot for the quest. Let's go have a look. Yep, go, 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 go. It's still there. Perfect. In fact, the the alarm's still going off, which is even... Like, you know, that means nothing's changed. Yeah, all the way in here. And... What we got? Marksman rifle. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. So if I go and have a look at this marksman rifle now, and compare it, that is just straight up a huge upgrade for us. I'm happy I went and had a look. Aren't you? Uh, I, I should also do armor modding, I guess. Because I have the ability to mod armor thanks to her. So how would I do that? Do I do modify weapon? It still says modify weapon, which is a little weird. So we can put on aramid pads. Sure. She needs to have the most armor, so we might as well do it with her. Modify armor. Yeah, leg armor. Awesome. Can I do it on the helmet as well? Yeah, perfect. So we've just given her a ton of extra armor, which is great. So she's now sitting with 18 armor. Now, if I try and say level up, the next one would be heat, right? I go to modify armor. Okay, it, it still shows omen, which is great. Modify armor, stick on the leg armor, confirm. Modify armor, uh, we don't have any head armor. That's okay, perfect. That's what I'm looking for, really. Uh, and then... Probably next. Well, it has to be somebody who actually has leg armor on. Yeah, you would be a good choice. Perfect. This seems like something that we should be doing. I should also do weapons as well. We'll do that in a second. Perks. So perk-wise, we can go masterful precision, which means precision strikes have a higher chance of inflicting the critical effects, which seems good. Mark target lowers evasion and takes 50% or fifty percent damage from precision strikes. We don't have that many precision strikes yet. Like, we don't get them constantly, so that doesn't seem useful just yet. 10 hit when you uh, for a sniper rifle when you don't move seems useful. And ambush attacks with sniper rifles that kill your target don't end the ambush. Oh, very cool. And then sneak attack damages up. Oh, well, those, are, those definitely synergize quite a lot. That is fantastic. Yeah, I think I'm going to take this one, Masterful Precision. 
So um, even though we don't get a lot of precision strikes, uh, which means that I don't think this one's going to work as well, this one, um, when we do get a precision strike, is going to make it very useful. Right, we also got another level up with Marshall Quan. So, attribute-wise, um, I think we're going to go for maybe awareness, just to continue to increase this. Yeah, seems fine. Skills. Uh, Skills-wise, we can keep going automatic weapons. We could also go kiss-ass. In fact, I'll go kiss-ass. If he's my kiss-ass person, we might as well make it go up. And then perks. Automatic weapons. So, enemies have 25% less benefit in cover, which is very useful. Spray and pray. Tears up an enemy uh, with twice as many SMG bullets as your normal attack. Uh, reckless. Cover what is it good for? Bring him on. Gain damage when not in cover with the um, submachine gun. I think I'm going to take this one. They get less. They get 25% less benefit from cover. That seems really useful. Right, and now I want to go and upgrade my weapons. So, in terms of weapons, let's start with the sniper. What have we got on it? So why can I not put these? I don't have high enough weapon modification on them. Max damage goes up, min damage goes down, but penetration goes up. So we'll take that on the barrel. And then crit chance goes up as well. Cool. I like that. Confirm. So it increases your max damage. Who's next? Whose weapon's most next and most important? Probably Lucia Wesson. Yeah, let's modify hers. Increase crit. Uh, these are the same kind of stuff. Confirm. Uh, shotguns. Those don't have anything. Okay. Um, that. Still, okay, so that's the same kind of stuff. This one. Same kind of stuff. Uh, this thing. Nothing. That's a shotgun. Your sign weapon. So I can go hit chance at 5%, which sounds useful. And then damage, we can just get a straight increase on that. Good. So this is so much quicker than it was in the previous games. Uh, the nailer submachine gun. Wait, she actually fails the requirements for it because she doesn't have an eye enough automatic weapons. Oh, we should definitely level her automatic weapons once then. Wait, does she have no skills and weapons at all? She has zero skills and weapons. I should definitely try... Oh, she has one point. Yeah, we'll take one point in automatic weapons. Definitely. Yeah. So that actually greatly helps her with this weapon. Okay, that's cool. But we don't have anything we can stick on it. All right. Uh, and then this thing. Again, nothing we can stick on it. Okay. Well, seems good. Yeah. Okay. I like where how that all turned out. So we are now significantly stronger. Which is how we should be after winning a fight that we were... Um, what are those noises? That we were heavily expected to lose. That is the kind of thing where if we win it, we should now be significantly stronger. Because we are now... We've got the benefit from winning. Yeah, let's get away from all these cats. I mean, at least if we ever need a cat to get the 3% critical chance, we can get one, but... Yeah, it doesn't seem like it's going to be the uh, top of our priority list, you know? Anyway, new scientist, though. We got a new scientist. We got powerful people in our party. I'm feeling more... I'm, I'm feeling like, you know, at least 50% more confident than I felt after the uh, clone fight, which we barely scraped through. Which probably means we're about to enter another fight in which we get absolutely destroyed. But, you know, that's fine. So we got the Gipper stopped oil deliveries. We already knew, know what that story is. Yeah. So that's one that's going to be a, quite a bit away because that was one of the main quest ones. Here? Wait, did I miss something? I did. Oh, okay. We got dogs we could recruit if we didn't already have a fox. Right, into... Uh, Brygo's Little Vegas. Yes, I want to travel to Little Vegas. Of course, who wouldn't want to travel there? Uh, no refunds are given for injuries sustained during a session with the Joker. Also, that do 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 do. I was expecting it was going to be never going to give you up, never going to let you down. But no, it wasn't. So, I was I was a little worried there. I still think this music might be, like, the previous music, by the way, that was like, oh, this is 100% getting claimed, didn't, so I'm like, I'm like, th is this all Wasteland 3 music? Because it is really good. Anyway. Rangers, this is Daisy. Sounds like you're at the Little Vegas, judging by all that noise in the background. 
It's a free country, we can go where we want. Remember, your first order of business is to find Delgado. Maybe somebody in there has seen him. Understood. While you're at it, if you can prove that Brago made a deal with the Dorseys, feel free to take that bastard down. Best of luck, Rangers. Daisy out. Thank We've you. We've got drinks, dancing, and games of chance. Pick your poison. Okay, uh, but first of all, let me just have a quick look in here. Um, yeah, so Delgado. I just want to double check. Uh, she, spent, she sent Inspector Delgado to the nightclub. Right, just want to double check who he was. Hello. Please, enjoy your time in our elegant establishment. All right, I guess we will. I actually really like those moving. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Um, can I play blackjack? Welcome to Little Vegas, friends. Care to play some blackjack? A small fee gets you a seat at the table and wins pay even money. A small sign reads house rules, only three hits per hand. Let's go. Yeah. The dealer lays two cards in front of you, and two in front of her. One card face up on each stack. You got a king and a king for a total of 20. Dealer shows two. Uh, you definitely stand. The dealer flips her, uh, her whole card showing two. For original two, she has a total of four. She hits. She lays down a three, so now she's got seven. She hits. Now she's got 12. Then she gets a 10 and it's bust. Uh, okay, so it's 14. And she had her three hits, but we won it, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> well, it was a little anticlimactic. Face, how low can you go? Can we speak to the disco bot? This place rocks, right? Rather than the prostitute? This disco bot, a modified Octotron, equipped with speakers and lights, pumping out rock and tunes. Present requests, party humans. No requests right now. Enjoy party time. Hmm, I guess maybe if we need somebody to get out onto the dance floor, we might want to choose the right thing. Let's, let's talk to you. Welcome back, friends. Pay to play a hand of blackjack, do wins pay even money. Do you run Remember any other games? Rule. Looking for one of those old Brigo classics, huh? He used to run three card money back in the real Vegas. I could run that. Easy rules. Put down a small bet and I lay down three cards. Two are tens, one's a queen. Pick old Queenie, and I pay you even money. Okay, so what that confirms to me is that this is the same Brigo from the first game, in theory. Nah, I'm out. As you wish. This table's always hot. Hello. Come back any- Fuck! Fuck! I am so screwed! Like, totally. Um, what's the problem? I went upstairs to get my sh shit out of the safe, but- Boulder and his mercs took my pants and kicked me out before I could get it. No fucking way I'm dealing with that asshole again. But I need that stash or I'm dead. Can you help me? Uh, why are you dead without the stash? I owe a lot of money. I don't sell this shit and they'll kill me. Um, where's this shit of yours exactly? In a safe? Up, 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 upstairs in the private room. Here's the combination. He hands you a nearly leg illegible note. Just watch out for Boulder. Okay, let's read the note. Uh, we also got a focusing crystal somewhere. Okay, oh, that must have been at the... Yes, yes, that makes sense. That must have been uh, at the weird room. Uh, I guess I have to choose all items because this doesn't fit into anything or maybe the note is not a knight. Oh, there it is, right. 34, 24, 34. Wonderful. Hello. Hey, you pallies. Try your hand at a game of luck and skill. Roulette's the name. Drop a bet on the table. I spin the doohickey and you win big if the ball lands on your choice. Red or black pay even money, but zero pays 10 to 1 if you've got the stones. Uh, I'm going to... Do you run any other games? Well, now, there's a game called High Low that Mr. Brigo used to run back in Vegas. Couldn't be simpler. You wager either high or low, and I roll this here die. One, two, three is low. Four, five, six is high. 
If you made the correct call, I pay you even money. Easy, huh? What do you say? Um, yeah, let's play high-low. Fine. What's your call? High or low? High. Oh, no luck. Okay, I want to put five on zero. The croupier spins the wheel and drops the ball onto the edge. It hops, skips, and jumps before finally dropping onto a numbered colored space. Sorry, friendos. What do you say? Want to give her another nope. spin? No stomach for a day. No problem. I'll be here after you grab another round of drinks. Let's go slot machine. A flashing sign on the slot machine reads $1 to play. Match three wins $5. Three neon cowboys win the $350 jackpot. Uh, I'm going to hack it to fix the odds in our favor. You find a control panel on the left side of the machine and surreptitiously slice a few wires. The apparatus jackpot me mechanism whirls into life. Winner. All right, buddies. You can enjoy your winnings with drink or a lay, but you ain't playing any more games with us. Brygo's orders. Aw. So we just locked ourselves out of games by cheating? Fair enough. No more Did gambling you know for that me. I, know the I learned my lesson. <sighs> It's not gambling when you know you're going to win. Hello. Ah, it's you, Red Hats. I was wondering when you'd come to see Charlie Nose. Farron Brigo's capo, leader of men, hero of the Battle of Two Buttes, savior of St. Elmo, and friend to everyone worth knowing. Welcome to Little Vegas. Uh, you got a lot of titles, huh? All those and more. I have plenty to tell you, Red Hats. All you need is working ears and an open heart. Charlie is a friend to all, and all know Charlie. So what can Charlie do for you? Um, why'd you call us Red Hats? Why wouldn't I? Isn't that who you are, with your hats so red? Oh well, can't help you if you're confused. Alright, what's with all the badges you're wearing? You see this silver ram medal? You like it? It's my favorite badge. The Patriarch himself gave it to me. Yes, sir, for saving his eldest son. Man, you should have seen the size of that snake. Okay, uh, can you tell us about another badge? See this one with the skull? Sheriff Daisy gave it to me for dealing with a corrupt marshal. She was a beast, let me tell you. Must have had some kind of mutation. Eight foot tall with fists like bricks. But I gave her the old razzle-dazzle, took her down. Razzle-dazzle? Is that what you call falling while running away from her and tripping her with your quivering ass? That worked, didn't it? She fell face first into a fire plug. Knocked her cold. Okay, interesting. Can you tell us about another batch? Look at this one, with the lightning bolt. This is a bit of a sad story. There was this orphanage up in the mountains, full of Beautiful kids, one sweeter than the next. They were having problems powering their homestead, so I repaired and optimized their generator. They gave me this, handcrafted by their prettiest little girl. Why is that sad? Well, after I left, a tribe of robots sensed a new source of power and came hunting. Destroyed the orphanage and everyone in it. Poor kids. But I got my payback. Yes, I did. Um, tell us about another badge. Uh... Okay. I think that's enough for now. Yeah, Charlie's gotta save a few secrets for himself. What can you tell us about Little Vegas? Ah, Mr. Brigo's pride and joy. Our pride and joy. He founded this club after coming here from Vegas. Apparently, it emulates the style of Sin City. But I never saw that place myself. You wanna talk to the man in charge? You'll find Mr. Brigo upstairs. Okay. Uh, what's your job around here? I'm the floor boss. I make sure our guests are happy and entertained. And that they don't wander into the back rooms. Okay. Why can't you let us... Can, wait, can you let us into the back rooms? I can. Did you mean, will you let us through? In that case, no. No. Jokes aside, Mr. Brago doesn't let anyone into the back without his explicit say-so. And we take Mr. Brago's instructions very seriously. If you want to go back there, talk to him, not me. Okay, we're looking for a man named Delgado. Elgato? What? 
No, that that would be for capturing game software badly. Well, ca uh, external capture cards badly. Come on, Charlie. You remember Delgado. Nice guy, family man. Way too good for the trash in this place. No way you could miss him. Oh, not like you, Marshall. You blend right in with the rest of us. He winks. Sorry. Haven't seen him. Old Charlie would tell you if he had. I had a feeling old Charlie wouldn't tell us anything unless it benefited old Charlie. All right, goodbye. Until next time, red hats. Okay, bartender. Hey there. What do you need? Um, what's on tap? All the best vices Colorado has to offer. Okay, shop-wise, you sell us a bunch of stuff. Okay, I'm just gonna sell junk here. Wonderful. Hey. Hey there. What do you need? Um, any juicy gossip to share? Loose lips don't get you far in Mr. Brigo's organization. So, nope. Okay, what can you tell us about this place? This is the Little Vegas. A slice of paradise in a freezing shithole. Plenty of sins available for the picking. Just take a look around. Uh, we're looking for a man named Delgado. Is he here? Sorry, chums. Don't know anybody by that name. Can't help you. Well, you were an unnamed NPC. Don't be strangers. Every kind of booze in the known world. So like 12 kinds, basically. But they got plenty of each. Awesome. Well, there's upstairs. There's an enforcer. We got a computer next to the enforcer. And maybe if we did something to distract him, we could access that computer. Anyway, I think what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to end the episode there. Thank you for watching. And next time, we're going to explore upstairs in the nightclub. I'll see you then. Goodbye.